Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the Holy Smokes Barbecue channel. Today I'm back with another 101 video. We just did pulled pork 101 and today we're doing brisket 101. So the top tips for your first brisket. Now I have this massive brisket here. Can't wait for you to see it. We're gonna do very, very simple seasoning. I'm gonna walk you through the steps to smoke it. Uh, and it's gonna be a very long cook, so we're gonna do this over a couple days. But I'm ready to get this process going, so let's get started. All right, so what we have here is a giant 18 pound choice brisket. And for your first tip today, we're gonna to call it know what you're getting. So uh, you might see a brisket that's about half this size, in which case you're probably buying just a brisket flat. So this is what's referred to as a uh, double brisket or a full packer brisket or a whole brisket. It's actually made up of two different sections. This flatter side that you have here is called the flat. This uh, larger side here that's got a lot more of that fat in it is called the point. So a lot of times the brisket that you're used to seeing that's kind of that floppy, what, what we're gonna have today, is mostly gonna be flat meat. The point is great for cubing up, tossing in some barbecue sauce, cooking it till it's, it's just nice and juicy and tender. And that's what we would call burnt ends. Now, as we look at this brisket, we can see that there is quite a bit of fat. Now, some of that has been taken off by my butcher and your butcher will, will uh, trim it for you a lot of times if you ask them but there's still some fat left here that I wanna take off. This fat right here is solid. There's another piece over here. So we're gonna largely take a lot of that out. And even though this is like an 18 pound brisket, um, I'm probably gonna end up cutting out about three to four pounds of fat. And that fat is not gonna go in the trash. It's gonna go into a bowl, and then I'm gonna make some beef tallow with it. But for now, we're gonna get started with trimming. So a couple tips for trimming. Uh, first, you're gonna trim each side a little bit differently. This top side, uh, I'm gonna basically take all of this fat off, uh, bring it pretty much down to the meat. On the other side, it's pretty much covered in fat, and that's what we call a fat cap. And that fat cap is pretty thick on this brisket, you can kind of see right there. And I'm gonna end up taking that down to about a quarter of an inch all the way over. It's important that this fat remains here because uh, we're gonna be smoking this for a very long time with this fat side down and it'll protect the meat from drying out. So with my super sharp knife, you wanna make sure you got a really sharp knife, I'm just gonna kinda go at this thing. A lot of uh, trimming a brisket is really finding out how deep that fat goes. And remember, you can never add meat back, but you can always take it away. So just careful on your first one when you trim, Make sure you don't trim down too far because you want to leave as much of that delicious meat in there as possible. So now I'm starting to see where I'm coming to that meat down there. So I don't really want to trim much further down into it because I don't want to really take out any of that meat if I can help it. All right, I've got a decent chunk of that fat out of there. It's okay to leave a little bit of it because I don't want to distort the shape too badly because we want that nice even uh, airflow of smoke over it. And now I'll start coming over some of these fat deposits that are just right here on the top. You see we got a little bit of silver skin here. I'm gonna take that off as best I can. Now speaking of the shape, I actually am taking this whole kind of chunk off here because I want the shape of this brisket to be as, you know, I guess aerodynamic as possible. So remove that chunk there. There's a good amount of fat in there from my tallow. Now this big chunk that's, uh, that's in here as well, I'm gonna take this off. Uh, I'm actually probably gonna smoke this separately and use this part for burn ends. Um, so, but I'm gonna take this off again and we're gonna be left with a brisket that's about that, that large. It really does help to have a nice sharp knife. All right, and now I'll just continue on this top part until I've removed most of this fat. All right, for this little bit of fat that's left, that's not gonna be an issue because it's it's thin enough, small enough, that it, it'll, it'll melt well. All right, now let's flip it over. All right, now, what you're looking at here is the fat cap. This fat cap is roughly an inch thick at uh, 
you know, most parts, it's thinner over here on the, uh, on the flat side, but uh, again, gonna take a good bit of this off, bring it down to about a quarter inch. I'm only gonna take a little bit off over here uh, because it's already pretty thin. Now as an example, you can see there that I actually went down to the meat. It's not a huge deal, don't let that, don't let that make you think that you've ruined your brisket. You absolutely have not. We just wanna, you know, the, the, the brisket changes. It, it, it's got peaks and valleys in it and you wanna just sort of know what you're, what you're doing there. But one little thing like that is not going to uh, be the end of the world for you. All right, it may not look like the prettiest trimming job, but trust me, there's nothing wrong with the way this is trimmed. I've still got a decent amount of fat kind of all the way around. Uh, a couple of spots here aren't really gonna matter. Um, and yeah, so let's flip it back over. And now we're going to kind of like shore this up, right? So um, there's a lot of kind of a, a, a discoloration around the outside just from packaging. Um, and I'm gonna sort of round out the edges a little bit, make it sort of smoother again, because we're really going for that maximum airflow around it. So I'm just gonna come around the edges here and just kind of shore that up so that I've got sort of that nice round corner there. Same thing here, just kind of taking off those hard edges. And so now we just do a little bit of a spot check just to make sure there's nothing else that's kind of loose that can come off of there uh, from a fat perspective. Make sure it feels nice all the way around, which this one does. All right, now check this out. I have quite a bit of fat here for my beef tallow, so I'm gonna make that in a little bit. And this is probably about four pounds, so quite a bit of fat. Now in the interest of simplicity, and again, just beginner, we're going to uh, use a very, very simple way of seasoning this brisket. And we're gonna use a mixture of salt, pepper, and garlic. And I happen to love that Pit Boss has made it very convenient in the GSP rub. Now, one thing that I do to this, if I'm making brisket, is I will add additional black pepper because I think that black pepper is uh, really, really great on brisket and it really helps you to develop a nice bark. So I've already pre-mixed that extra into there, but this is salt, pepper, and garlic with extra pepper. I like to be a little bit liberal with my seasoning here. I don't want to overdo it because I want the flavor of the meat to really stand out. Now we're just going to pat this on. You'll notice I did not use a binder because this does not need it. It's nice and sticky on its own. A little more here. The seasoning smells great. Especially with that extra pepper in it. All right, there we go. The brisket has been uh, fully seasoned. I did not season the, uh, the fat cap. That is something that's totally your choice to season or not to season. I never really season the fat cap on my briskets because uh, I'm not really gonna be eating a lot of the fat, so I don't really care about it. Now, something that I said in my pulled pork video that also applies here is you wanna make sure to let this rest. Let it sit just like this. Preferably, do this the night before you're gonna smoke it and stick it in your refrigerator all night long. And let it uh, kind of have that time for that seasoning to absorb. Um, I'm going to do it for like 30 minutes or so, uh, and then we're going to get it on the smoker, so I'll see you in a few. All right, today I'm smoking this brisket on my Pit Boss Savannah Onyx Edition. This thing is a tank. I love it. It's got so much cooking space on it, perfect for this giant brisket. You'll notice one thing that I did was I took out the lower cooking grates, and that's not really, like, you don't have to do that. I took them out because I was cleaning the grill, which I'll talk about in a second but um, I'm going to be smoking on this center rack so that it's just a little bit farther removed from the heat source. Now, two very, very important tips when you are planning an overnight smoke on a pit boss. First, make sure that the inside of the grill is clean. Uh, not like spotless clean, but make sure that all the ash is out, any like food residue, anything like that, because you don't want any flare ups. And second, make sure that your hopper is full of pellets. You don't want to run out of pellets during a long smoke. So this amount of pellets, the Savannah holds 30 pounds. Uh, that'll last me plenty through the night. Now another tip with a brisket, always use an internal meat thermometer on your first brisket. Preferably one that's wireless where you can go inside and monitor it remotely. Many pit boss models have Wi-Fi functionality built in. 
so you can use the Pit Boss app to track that stuff. The Savannah does not, it is not a Wi-Fi enabled grill, so I'm gonna be using a different wireless uh, thermometer. Most Pit Boss units come with at least one or two uh, meat probes, so you can use that as well. Um, but today I'm gonna be using a different one. Now we've got the Pit Boss set to 180 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about as low as it goes. So I'm gonna put the brisket in, I'm gonna let it sit at 180 all night long, and then in the morning when I get up, I'll come out and I'm gonna turn the temperature up to about 225 and let it finish. And then final tip at this point is you wanna make sure that you use kind of a lighter wood with this. So um, no matter you know, what you're making, anything that's gonna be in smoke for you know, upwards of 24 hours is gonna take on a decent amount of smoke. You don't want it to be overpowering. You really wanna be able to taste the delicious uh, brisket that we're making. So a great choice is the Pit Boss Hickory Blend, which is what I'm using. So I would say use something like that. Competition blend would be really good. Classic blend would be good as well. So pick one of those up and that'll make sure that your brisket has the perfect wood flavor. All right, we're ready to put this brisket on the Pit Boss. All right, get it open up here. Beautiful. And right here, fat side down. Now I know from previous cooks that this side of the grill is gonna be a little bit hotter than this side, which is why the thicker part of the meat is over there. Let's go ahead and get these thermometers in. I like to do two in the point meat here, just because it is really thick. And we'll go in about like that. And one in the flat as well. All right, and now I can see my three probes are as follows. I'm gonna take this in so that I can monitor it. And then I'll see you again in the morning when we're ready to increase the temperature. All right, good morning everybody. Back day number two here. And this brisket has gone all night in the Pit Boss at 180. You can see here that my temperatures are pretty, pretty normalized. 137 in two of them and then 128 in the other. So we still got a ways to go because we want this thing to get up to 203 degrees. So let's take a look at it after all night in the summer. Oh wow, look at that. Woo, pretty color. Now you'll notice that a lot of the top is dry and this is gonna be a perfect time for us to talk about our next tip, which is spritzing. So get yourself a spray bottle, just like this, and you can use really anything. I'm just using water today, but you can use uh, Worcestershire sauce, apple cider vinegar, apple juice, a mixture of any of those things, really whatever you want. The key is just to maintain moisture. So we'll just spray the surface area there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, so now that I am you know, able to be attentive to this brisket, I'm cranking the heat up just a little bit to 200 and we're gonna go to 250. I think I originally said 225, but we're gonna go up to 250 degrees. And again, we're just gonna continue to monitor. I'll be back out to check, make sure it's not drying out. We'll spritz it some more. And a little bit later, we'll talk about some more tips. So we'll see you, I don't know, a few hours. All right, we are another few hours in Let's take a look at our brisket. Oh man, look at that color. That's the part we're going for. Oh man, does that look good. So right now my internal temperatures are in the 175 range, so we still got a ways to go. Now at this point, you could wrap the brisket and you could ask 100 different people what to do at this point and you'll probably get 100 different answers. But what we're gonna do today is not wrap it. I'm gonna leave it just like this all the way until it's done. But I am gonna continuously come out and spritz because as you can see here, we are uh, drying out there. So we'll just keep doing this, maybe every half hour or so. Again, I'm just using water, use whatever you like, and I'll be back with you when we're up to temperature and ready to take it off. All right, as you can see, we are up to 202.8, which is a perfect temperature to pull this brisket. Uh, anywhere 202, 203, 204 even, that's a perfect time to take it off. And so let's go ahead and see what it looks like. Now I am using uh, double layer gloves. I've got some heat resistant gloves underneath these, uh, these latex gloves. So, um, so we're gonna go ahead and grab it just with my hands like this. Make sure that you have some good heat resistant gloves. Now for a total of 21 hours, there is our brisket. Look at that. Now that bark is just beautiful. You can see these areas here where we had some of that fat that we left on. 
that just rendered into this just pure brisket juiciness. All right, now it's time to rest this brisket. Very, very, very important. You would never want to cut into this right now. Juice would just go everywhere and you'd be left with just dry meat. This thing has been in the smoke for 21 hours. We need to give it at least an hour to let everything kind of come back together inside. But we want to keep it hot. So the first step of doing that is to wrap it in butcher paper. We'll come over like that. We'll flip it like that. Get these ends here. Like so. Now, I have here a cooler. Now what I did to this cooler is obviously it's empty and I filled it with just steaming hot water and let it sit there for a little while. I emptied it and did the same thing again. So it's really, really hot inside there. So I'm gonna take my brisket, put it right in this hot cooler. And then finally, I have kind of an old towel that I've soaked in really, really hot water as well. And so we're gonna lay this right on top of it as sort of an insulator. Now we'll just close it up. Which I know you probably can't see. All right, and our brisket is resting. How long should you rest a brisket? You could rest it for four or five hours if you want. The longer you rest it, the better, honestly. Um, but I'm going to just let this rest for about an hour and then I'll be back. I'll show you how to slice it and then we're gonna try it. And I can't wait. All right, at long last, it is time. We're gonna get a look at this brisket. Just gonna grab it out of the cooler here. There we go. And let's unwrap it. Man, look at that. Look at that. Wow, does that not look incredible? I mean, the bark is absolutely beautiful. It smells incredible. It's got such a great beefy smell to it. I cannot wait. Grab our guy out of here. Directly on our cutting board. And now it's time to see the inside of this brisket. So I mentioned earlier in the video, we got the points, we got the flat. Um, you can see the way that the grain is going. You always want to cut against the grain, so that's what we're going to do. And we're going to start with our Pit Boss brisket knife. Since the grain is running this direction, we're going to slice this direction. So I'm going to come right in here, and we're going to go right down the middle. I fully expect to see a gorgeous smoke ring. Oh, man. Here we go. And... There is our brisket. Look at the juice. Just look at that. Oh my gosh. Wow. Let's look at the other side here. Same thing. Incredibly juicy. Look at that smoke ring. Beautiful. That's what 21 hours will do. So I'm gonna turn this around. I'm gonna get a few slices here. I'm gonna go about about the width of a pencil on your slices. Just about like so. And there you can see that, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, that is gonna be amazing. All right, will this be, in fact, the best brisket I've ever made? Let's see, because here we go. Oh man, that looks fantastic. We're gonna try it. 21 hour smoked brisket simple as you can get on the uh, on the season here we go oh oh man mm. the juiciness that is fantastic so so tender so juicy so flavorful holy smokes this man this is this is phenomenal so so good mm. and so there you have it we trimmed it, we seasoned it. Uh, none of that was especially difficult and, uh, and we are left with something absolutely incredible. So I'm gonna get this inside, but thank you once again for tuning into the Holy Smokes Barbecue channel. And if you like this video, make sure to click the thumbs up to give us a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And if you like Brisket 101, check out these two videos here, including Pulled Pork 101, where I show you some very, very simple tips on making your first pork butt. So check those out, enjoy your brisket, and I'll see you next time.